Hello there, I have a fun thing to make today. It's a very simple, very basic thing, but my husband has a couple of coworkers who have had babies recently and wants a gift for them. So I'm gonna make some burp cloths. And it, although it's been a long time since I've had babies, I do remember my favorite burp cloths and the kind I used to make for myself were just out of flannel. But obviously you, if you've been in the baby world, Lately, you have seen this cotton gauze stuff. It's so soft. You've probably seen blankets out of this. Um, now they sell it in yardage. And so I wanted to play around with different fabrics, some just flannel and then some with this cotton gauze on the back. I just got these from the remnant bin from Hobby Lobby and then I purchased a few yards of flannel. So this will be a very beginner friendly um, tutorial for how to make burp rags. They're pretty basic. I'm gonna make them 11 by 16. You can of course play with sizes or whatever, but you're gonna need fabrics, the softer the better. Interestingly, I also bought these. These are flannel, this is cotton gauze. This one is printed though, and it's definitely not as soft as these solid ones. This one's from Joanne, this is from Hobby Lobby. But these three fabrics are on clearance and they all match, so I'm gonna make a set with those. And then for the inside, because you want them to be pretty absorbent and you don't want the, you know, spit up and stuff to just soak right through. So I'm going to put another layer of flannel on the inside. So I always keep white flannel around for all kinds of things, for bibs, for the doll pattern that I made, etc. So before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any new tutorials. And also you can check out my patterns for sale in my Etsy shop, Pin Cut Sew Studio Etsy shop. And be sure and go follow my blog at pincutsostudio.com where I post all kinds of sewing content all the time. So let's get started. I think my first one, I'm gonna use these two fabrics. I did pre-wash these. I don't always pre-wash flannel if I'm making a baby blanket or something, but because these are two different fabrics and I wasn't sure how they'll behave in the wash, like I know this crinkles up quite a bit. I ironed it. Before I ironed it, it was very much more crinkled. So I pre-shrunk because both of these fabrics shrink and I'm not sure they shrink at the same rate. So I pre-shrunk and then I ironed. So I'm gonna cut my, I'm gonna start with this actually. I'm gonna go iron this because ew, wrinkles. Okay, I ironed my whales. I'm going to cut this 12 by 17. If you don't have a rotary cutter and mat, if you're just getting started, just um, tape some basic printer paper together and make yourself a pattern. 12 by 17, because our finished size is gonna be 11 by 16. Okay, 17 in this direction. And then 12 in this direction. Make sure that if you're using a directional print, you probably want the, you want it to go lengthwise. You don't want sideways, like picture the burp rag on your shoulder. You don't want your little designs to be going sideways on your shoulder. You want them to go straight. Right. Okay, here's my little burp cloth. If you like yours bigger, you can make them bigger. If you like them narrower and longer, you can make it whatever you want. Okay, now that I have this cut, I can just use this as a pattern to cut my next pieces. Okay, here's a little trick for you. You'll notice that your woven fabrics have very little stretch this direction and much more stretch this direction. It will be much easier for you if you match the stretch, see this is the very little stretch side. So I'm gonna put this this direction because both my stretches run this direction. It will be easier for you when you sew everything together if the stretch matches. I'm just gonna cut around here. Another fabric option would be Terry which you can buy by the yard also. And then you might not even need the flannel lining. Also, when I was researching for this project, some 
burp cloths that you can buy have up to eight layers of this gauze. So you can just sort of do what you like and what feels cuddliest to you. I feel like my, my line is crooked. <laughs> I'm gonna straighten this up. Maybe I should have made a paper pattern. Okay, so I have this and I have it on top of my flannel. Now I'm going to treat these two as one piece. Because they're flannel, they stick together really well. I'm not gonna base them together. But you're gonna want your flannel to be sandwiched on the inside so it's gonna just cling to the bottom of your top fabric. If you want extra absorbency, you can use two layers of flannel or two layers of this gauze, whatever you want. Okay, so now, because the gauze is my shiftiest fabric, I'm going to carefully place my top and lining fabric on top face down like this and cut around it. And just try to get it as straight as I can. Okay. While it's down here, before I even pick it up, I'm gonna go ahead and pin it. Pin all my layers together. I'm gonna leave an opening at one end. So I always put two pins in the spot where I wanna stop sewing. So I'm gonna start here and stop here. And I'm gonna go sew this all together in a half an inch seam, leaving this open. Okay, I've sewn my layers together, leaving my opening for turning, and I'm going to find my scissors as always. Here they are. And I'm going to trim my corners. So if you had any trouble with your layers shifting while you're sewing, especially if you're using gauze because it is a shifty fabric, then there's a couple things you can try. You can first baste your layers, your top, or your bottom to your lining layer before you sew them together, or you can attach a walking foot to your sewing machine. And I will link to a universal walking foot. It basically is just a foot that helps all the layers move together at the same speed instead of getting bunched up. So those are some things you can try if you had trouble. So now you're going to reach inside between your lining and your front fabric, not your lining and your, I mean your back and your front, not your lining and your front but between your backing and your front fabric and turn the whole thing right side out. Then you can use a chopstick or turning tool to gently poke your corners nice and neat and your edges. Whoops. Whoa. Careful with that gauze because your turning tool can poke right through it. Okay, I'm gonna go iron this flat, making sure I iron my edges nice and neat, that I don't get them like folded in. Okay, it's pressed nice and neat. You can see here I open, I ironed this opening closed just as if I had sewn it. So now we're gonna go top stitch. You can put a pin there if you want to. I'm gonna go top stitch around the entire edge, one eighth inch from the edge. Okay, I top stitched. I used navy thread because it matches the back and I thought it was cute. Okay, one more thing, and this is totally optional, but I, I used to like to do it when I made burb cloths for gifts. So I'm going to go press this into thirds like this. So I pressed lines on here and I'm gonna go sew a line of zigzag stitching down those pressed lines. It just kind of gives it a little bit something extra. You can, of course, use a marking tool to mark lines or masking tape, but I find this is pretty easy. Okay, I'm all done. It's so cute and it's very soft and cuddly. Um, I did say that this stitching is optional, but it also does hold all your layers together. So the more layers you're using, the more I would recommend the zigzag stitches. Also, it just makes it easy to fold and to give as a gift. So I'm gonna make some more of these. I'm gonna experiment with different fabrics. But if you would like a printable version of this little project, you can find that at my Etsy store for a few dollars. I'll link to that below. While you're there, check out all my other patterns too. Um, so that you don't have to refer back to this video all the time. It's just a convenient printable version.
So let me get going and make some more. 